So the passing of the 1893 Sunday Law Bill in America is a warning to us today that this is what is going to happen and you need to take this seriously. I need to take this seriously. If you're watching at home, you need to take this seriously. Friends, Dr. Conrad Vine has released a new video about moving out of the cities before the final crisis that every Adventist needs to watch. In his presentation, he explained Jesus' warning to his people to leave the city of Jerusalem because the city was going to be destroyed and linked that with the future when Adventists would have to leave the cities because of the final crisis. Let's listen to him. And so what Jesus said about the, the destruction of Jerusalem is a foretaste of what is going to happen before his second return. And we see a parallelism, parallelism here. In Matthew 24, Jesus speaks about the surrounding Roman armies, and he says there in the left-hand text on the screen, he says, So when you see the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place, as was spoken of by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. And you say, how are we to understand that? Well, if you look at the parallel passage in Luke's gospel, Jesus doesn't say um, the desolating sacrilege standing in the holy place. What Jesus says there is, this is the parallel explanation, he says, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then those in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those inside the city must leave it, and those out in the country must not enter into it. So what is the meaning of this prophecy? Jesus spoke of when the Roman armies would approach in AD 66 at the start of the Jewish rebellion. The Romans came up to Jerusalem and they surrounded the city and they established their, their pagan banners in an area just outside the city walls known as Holy Ground or the Holy Place. This constituted, according to Luke 21 and Matthew 24, the abomination of desolation standing in the Holy Place, not to be confused with the Holy Place in the temple. Sister White describes it as follows. She says, When the idolatrous standards of the Romans should be set up in the holy ground, which extended some furlongs outside the city walls, then the followers of Christ were to find safety in flight. When the warning sign should be seen, those who would escape must make no delay. That is how she comments on this passage from the teachings of Jesus. And she goes on to say this. She says, when the, After the Romans under Cestius had surrounded the city, they unexpectedly abandoned the siege when everything seemed favorable for an immediate attack. The besieged, that is the people of Jerusalem, despairing of successful resistance, were on the point of surrender when the Roman general withdrew his forces without the least apparent reason. And this is exactly what happened in history. The Romans surrounded Jerusalem. It looked like they were going to conquer Jerusalem. And then for some unknown reason in history, nobody's figured out why he did this, the Roman general just marched his soldiers back to Syria. And the Christians took this as the sign that Jesus had spoken of, and they left Jerusalem immediately. Sister White says this, but God's merciful providence was directing events for the good of his own people. The promised sign had been given to the waiting Christians, and now an opportunity was afforded for all who would to obey the Savior's warning. Without delay, they fled to a place of safety, the city of Pella in the land of Perea, beyond the river Jordan. And so history tells us that when Jerusalem was eventually destroyed in AD 70, as far as we know, there were no Christians in the city in that cataclysmic event. Over a million people perished. The survivors were sold into slavery in such large groups that the price of slaves collapsed in the Middle East. And they were selling Jewish slaves off in batches of 30 or 50 at a time simply to get rid of the numbers of prisoners that they had. But no Christians perished in the collapse of Jerusalem. Why? Because they listened to the Savior's voice. And when they saw the sign that had been given them by Jesus, they took note and they followed their Savior's warning, and they left the comforts of Jerusalem for crossing the River Jordan, and there they were safe from the, from the events of AD 70. So he continued to say that a time is coming when the faithful people of God would have to leave the cities. And he was referring to Adventist. The final crisis is ahead of us, and as Seventh-day Adventists, we must be prepared to leave the cities when these times come. It is no time for God's people 
to be laying up their treasures in the world. The time is not far distant when, like the early disciples, we shall be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was the signal of flight by the Judean Christians, so the assumption of power on the part of our nation in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. It will then be time to leave the large cities, preparatory to leaving the smaller ones for retired homes in secluded places among the mountains. So Sister White compares the arrival of the Roman armies with the arrival of a Sunday law in the United States as being signs to leave the large cities for smaller cities and towns, and uh, you stay in there until the national Sunday law comes in. She says, instead of spending our means in self-gratification, we should be studying to economize. Our missions must be sustained. New missions must be open. That is, we are not going to retreat into the mountain as preppers. God has given us a task to do. We, 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 we may leave the large cities in order to set up outpost centers in order that we might be a light to the Gentiles and a light to the dying world, that this is how God wants us to live. Just because we leave the large cities doesn't mean we abandon the people in those cities. We have still a, a heavenly commission to share the gospel with the people in the cities. Houses of worship, she says, are needed where the people may be invited to hear the truths for this time. For this very purpose, God has entrusted a capital to his stewards. God has given you today, if you're watching this program or you're here in the church, God has given you capital for a heavenly purpose. Let not your property be tied up in worldly enterprises so that this work shall be hindered. Get your means where you can handle it for the benefit of the cause of God. Send your treasures before you into heaven. Now, I would say today as a preacher that when the national Sunday law comes in in this nation that will be enforced globally, that is not the first sign to leave the cities. That's the last sign. It's not the first sign. That's, this is the last sign. So the passing of the 1893 Sunday law bill in America is a warning to us today that this is what is going to happen, and you need to take this seriously. I need to take this seriously. If you're watching at home, you need to take this seriously. So this is coming from Dr. Conrad Vine. We need to take this seriously. All the things that are happening around us today are signs that, hey, the end time is near. In fact, Dr. Conrad Vine is one of the speakers within the Seventh-day Adventist Church that really speaks the truth about the end times. In fact, I have watched several of his videos talking about the papacy, talking about end time events and many others. And I realized that this man has great knowledge concerning end time events and speaks the truth from the Bible. So friends, I agree perfectly with what Dr. Conrad Vine is saying. E.G. White says something in Adventist Home that I want to read to you. She said, do not consider it a privation when you are called to leave the cities and move out into the country places. So the question now is, how prepared are you to leave the cities even before the Sunday law is enforced as Seventh-day Adventists? It looks like some Adventists are not prepared at all to leave the cities because of how we are enjoying the cities, how we are enjoying life in the cities. Friends, I understand that the decision to leave the cities is personal and I don't think anybody is going to force anyone to leave the cities. Your pastor is not going to force you to leave the city. Your church elder is not going to force you to leave the city. It's totally a personal decision to leave the cities before the Sunday law is enforced, all right, or before the final crisis. Friends, Dr. Conrad Vine's presentation was very long and he spoke about many things that I also want you to have a share. So I have linked the full video of his presentation in this video's description that I want you to check it out after watching this video. You know, here on this channel, we share with you every single thing that is happening within and maybe outside of the church so that you can know what is really going on. So this is the right place to be if you are an Adventist and want to know what is really going on within Adventism. So I will encourage everyone, every Adventist to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any video we publish. 
Thank you for watching. My name is Brother Lawrence. See you next time.